Today's message with Pastor Mickey Hardy. So it's wonderful to be here for this weekend and to trust the Lord for whatever He has for us. We are living in a time of great deception in the church. So many false teachings and diverse heresies that are silently infiltrating the church. That's why I believe that God wants to put some standard, some things clear into our hearts and minds so that we can face life and everything that come our way and serve the Lord in freedom. I believe that God is busy restoring, bringing, bringing truth to the body of Christ. And we thank God that his word comes alive in our hearts and lives more and more. That the Lord is revealing his word, his truth, more and more and we want to thank him and we are grateful to him that there are men of God even among us tonight that are seeing things in the spirit that want the church to be strong and I believe that God in his time of restoration strengthen us in what we believe so that there will be no compromise and nothing to come and disrupt the truth of God's word in our hearts because there will be many influences inside the church and I thank God that Jesus is building his church because otherwise it would have been very hard and difficult to stay on on track with what is happening and what we are hearing in the church world the church environment so I would like to just speak to you during this weekend about our life in Christ freedom I would like you to open your Bible with me in the book of Peter 1 Peter chapter 2 We'll try and make things clear so that there is no doubt but things are well established in our hearts. Now the truth will be well established in our hearts. 1 Peter chapter 2 we read from verse 4. Coming to him, talks about Jesus, as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house 
a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. And verse 6 says, therefore, it is also contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious. And he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. We thank the Lord for his word. We can see here that the Apostle Peter is quite clear that we, under the new covenant, we are called to bring spiritual sacrifices unto God through Jesus Christ. Spiritual sacrifices. And the Apostle Peter states something here that God has laid in Zion a chief cornerstone. We know he talks about Jesus Christ that has replaced the old covenant laws so that we, in our relationship with Christ, we can live in freedom. We can be free in our hearts to bring to God spiritual sacrifices not according to the law, not according to ordinances or whatever that may be. But here, Apostle Peter wants, it, wants to make it very clear that there was a time in the old covenant that the people of God were bringing sacrifices under the law. But we under the new covenant, we are called to bring to God through Christ, through our relationship with him, spiritual sacrifices. In other words, completely free from the Lord and in total freedom. Completely separated from the law, the spirit of the law under the old covenant. But now today, whatever we are going to do, whatever we are going to express in our relationship with Christ and in everything that we want to do for him, it will be in freedom. Freedom from the law. The spirit under the new covenant is for us to be free in our hearts in whatever we are supposed to do, we are called to do, everything totally separated from the law. It's on this basis that I would like to share with you during this weekend about some things that we are supposed to do as a Christian under the new covenant, but so that we can understand that we are called in that relationship with Christ for everything to be free. Free in our hearts, not under any obligation, not under any law, but in total freedom. And this is something that the church has a difficulty to accept. But yet, we are going to see through Scripture that we are called to live our Christian life in total freedom. Total freedom. And I always say that this is one of the greatest gifts that God has given to the church. <laughs> is freedom. Freedom to be ourselves. Freedom in whatever we do. 
not having to consider any obligation, anything that would ask of our lives to be obliged to do it, but in total freedom. So the first thing I would like to share with you tonight is our freedom in giving to God. Our freedom. In other words, being free from every type of law and obligation, but to be able to give to God from the depths of our hearts. Let us open our Bibles in Hebrews chapter 7. And we know that the book of Hebrews, it's a book to show that Jesus is better and is above all that is of the old covenant. Above the Aaron priesthood, above angels, above Moses, above Aaron, so that Christ become the center of everything of our lives so that law has got nothing to do in our lives and the Hebrews had a problem because they had gone back to Judaism in some ways and the author of the book of Hebrews has to convince them and show them that in fact Jesus is above everything of the old covenant. And in the chapter 7, he wants to show to them that Jesus is above the Aaron priesthood. And we read from verse 1. And as we read, as what, when the author of the book of Hebrews wants to show that, he scratches on his way the teaching of tithing. Amen. That's not what he wants to show. In fact, he wants to show that Jesus is more perfect than the Aaron priesthood. And he shows now how, as we read the scripture, that in fact, we are completely free from the law of the old covenant as far as tithing is concerned. And I believe it's got to be clear, and we are going to show it by the help of the Holy Spirit in the first few Verses of this chapter. Now it says here for, for this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the most high God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. Now remember, see here that it is not Abraham who blessed Melchizedek, but it's Melchizedek who blessed Abraham. All right? That's very clear. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. First being translated king of righteousness, and then also king of Salem, meaning king of peace. Without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning or days of days nor end of life, but made like the Son of God, remains a priest continually. Now consider how great this man was. Now he's talking about Melchizedek. This man that came across Abraham. 
made like the Son of God. And Abraham bring the tithe to Melchizedek. Now let's continue and see that. And indeed those who are of the sons of Levi, who receive the priesthood, have a commandment to receive tithes from the people. Do you know about that? Huh? That the, the, the Levites in the old covenant, they had to receive the tithes for themselves. Okay? All right. And then it goes and it says, according to the law. So it's according to the law that the priest had to receive the tithing from the Israelites, from all the people of God. That is from their brethren. Though they have come from the loins of Abraham. Now watch. But he whose genealogy is not derived from them, in other words, from the Aaron priesthood, from the Levites, received tithes from Abraham and blessed him who had the promises. Now beyond all contradiction, the lesser is blessed by the better. That's the point where the author of the book of Hebrews wanted to show the Hebrew Jews converted to Christ. But then he goes, he says, hence here mortal men receive tithes, but there he receives them of whom it is wisdom, witnessed that he lives. Even Levi, who received tithes, paid tithes through Abraham, so to speak, for he was still in the loins of his father Abraham when Melchizedek met him. Now I want, you to, sh I want to show you something in the verse 6. He said, but he whose generation is not derived from them. In other words, that man Melchizedek that presented himself before Abraham does not come from the tribe of Levi. It's got nothing to do with it. Before it was before the law, before the Levitical priesthood. But it's just to show you clearly here that the Levites who had to receive tithes from the people of Israel they also give tithes, even the Levites, through Abraham. But this man Melchizedek, the Bible says, whose genealogy is not derived from them. And it's not a coincidence that in the same chapter and in verse 14, the Bible says that talking about Jesus, for it is evident that our Lord arose from Judah and not from the tribe of Levi. Can you understand what's happening here? Hmm? Jesus came from the tribe of Judah, not from the tribe of Levi. And Melchizedek, the Bible says here, he was made like the Son of God. You see the comparison? When Jesus came, he came from the tribe of Judah. Judah and not from the tribe of Levi. And this is what is expressed even in the verse 8. He says, Here mortal men receive tithes, but then he receives them of whom it is witnessed that he lives. So it is very clear, very clear, that Abraham, Melchizedek, was not from, in comparison, from the tribe of Levi. And he goes further and says, he received tithes according to the law. He did not receive tithes according to the law. Melchizedek did not receive the tithe from Abraham according to the law. Firstly, there was no law. 
That's number one. There was no law. In other words, Abraham was not obliged to give 10% to God. It was an act of his free will. There was no law. It was an act of his free will. And what I like in there is that Melchizedek, that verse 6 for me, speaks very clearly. The, whose genealogy is not derived from them. From them, the Levites. We know he came before the law. We understand that. But why is it written here that the genealogy is not derived from them, received tithes from Abraham, and blessed him who had the promises? So we can understand today that the principle of tithing in the church today is not scriptural in the new covenant. It is not scriptural in the new covenant. And the Bible says in chapter 8, verse 4, For if we were on earth, if he, Jesus, was on earth, he would not be a priest according to which tribe? The same tribe, Levite. He would not be a priest since there are priests who offer the gifts according to the law. In other words, the author wants to prove that Jesus is above the Aaron priesthood, above the Levites. Totally above, completely above. And it's got nothing to do with that Aaron priesthood under the old covenant. Nothing to do. So when people tell you that the New Testament talks about tithing in chapter 7 of the book of Hebrews... Yes, it does talk about tithing. Tithing in the old covenant, even if Abraham gave tithe to Melchizedek, but his genealogy has got nothing in common to the Levites. Nothing in common. So in other words, Abraham, when he came to Melchizedek, what did he do? He voluntarily blessed him. With his heart. It was an act of willingness to give to Melchizedek because he was not obliged to do it. He wasn't forced to do it. There was no law that would tell him that he had to do that. He was free. And then when did the law come? After the Lord come, the law came after in the Levitical priesthood, they God established tithing as part of the law. It's after, got nothing to do. So we are free the same way as Abraham was free to give according to the desires of his heart, not under the law. So we are giving to God who is not even a priest according to the tribe of Levi. Not even. And he says if I was on earth, if, if Jesus was on earth, he would not even be a priest according to the tribe of Levi. He would not. So how would then would he receive 10% as a law to himself? How would he? He's not a priest according to Levi. All right. So he's not under law. There's no law that would say that because he's not from the tribe of Levi. He's from the tribe of Judah, not Levi. So if he was on earth, the Bible says clearly, I repeat it again, he would not be a priest. How now us... We are going to give to the Lord 10%. And he's another order. He's not from the order of Aaron. Not at all. How then are we obliged to give to Jesus? Something. 
Because the, the, some people say, well, when Abraham gave 10% to Melchizedek, it was before the Lord. Yes, it was before the Lord. But why is it then that the author of this book says, but he, Melchizedek, who the Bible says, was made like the Son of God, Jesus, his genealogy is not derived from the Levites. His genealogy doesn't, is not derived from the same genealogy of the Levites. So it's very clear that Abraham was not under the law and was not obliged to bring 10% to Melchizedek. It was according to his free will, according to what he desired to do. It's very simple. Is it simple for you? So now, Jesus is above Aaron. Agreed? Above. Above the Aaron priesthood. Above the priest of the old covenant. Above. So why, are, why do we have to try and link Jesus, the high priest of the new covenant, to the priest of the old covenant, who were under the law? We are not under the law. That's why we are a free people. A completely free people. In other words, Abraham gave 10% of all that he had freely. Freely. So are we to do. Freely. Bring to God freely whatever we have on our hearts. Whatever is the desire of our hearts hearts because we are not under any law we are a free people sometimes i'd share how free we are to even pastors they they you know it's as if i'm coming from somewhere where you know strange things but it's amazing how we are can be taught to believe something without revelation we can be taught to believe something without revelation and it becomes part of our lives and now it is hard for us to comprehend to comprehend what is the truth of god's word what is the heart of god for us people of the new covenant today And I believe you can understand tonight. If I tell you that you are obliged to do something, are not you then under the law? Yeah. The moment you are obliged to do something, you put yourself under the law. The moment it is something that you have to do, it's under the law. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's why this, this teaching of tithing must be very clear to us. Very, very, very clear. That's why Abraham, he did not give to Melchizedek 10% of what he had in the same spirit that the people of Israel were giving to the Levites. Not in the same spirit at all. Completely different. There was no law in front of him. There was no obligation in front of him. He represented, the Bible is a made like the Son of God. Made like the Son of God. In other words, it supersedes 
The Aaron priesthood, it supersedes the priest of the old covenant. And the Bible says, in fact, even Levi, even Levi, who received tithes under the old covenant from the people of Israel, he paid tithes to, through Abraham. He paid tithes to, to Melchizedek. That's what he says. Why? For he was still in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. In other words, even the Levites, they bring tithes because Abraham gave tithes to Melchizedek and they were in the loins of Abraham, so they themselves then paid tithes to Melchizedek. That's what the Bible says. They were breaking the law after. Because they were, they were not paying tithes. The people of Israel brought their tithes to them. But before that, because they were in the loins of Abraham, they, were, they are already paid tithe to Melchizedek. It's amazing. So Abraham gave 10% of all he had freely. From the depth of his heart. So we are clear, Abraham, he gave to Melchizedek not in the spirit of the old covenant, but it was a free gift. When God gives us freedom, is it for us to backslide or is it for us to progress? Hmm? When God gives us freedom, It is for us to perfect ourselves. It is the foundation for us to grow, to be better in everything that we do, to please Him better in everything that we do, but not to backslide. And I believe today many Christians that are free from the teaching of tithing use that freedom to give less to God. They were once bound by a law where they were obliged to do something. They were obliged to do something. And now they are free. Instead of using that freedom to grow in everything that we do, no, we suddenly decide that it's not necessary. Yeah, we suddenly decide that it's not necessary, it's okay. I'm not coming back to the 10%, no. I'm not going back to 10%. I'm talking about the attitude of heart. I don't care about 10%, 15, 5, 12, 15. I, it's, that's not a problem. It's the attitude of heart. And we need to understand that our freedom is not to put us in prison. It's not to draw us to backslide. It is for us to grow, to progress in every area of our life. Every area of our lives. It's amazing how there can be two extremes. One, we are still bound by the law and we can do nothing. We are in prison. We are slaves. And the other one, we are free. But we use our freedom to walk in the flesh. Before that, we were giving to God by fear. Yeah, we feared God. We feared because something would happen to us. 
if we do not give that 10% of whatever we have. <laughs> and now we are free. And we are called to live according to the desires of our hearts. To bless God. Abraham decided to give 10%. That's fine for him. But we under the new covenant, we are not called to just limit ourselves. We are called to grow. It's like my wife and myself, we always decide to, to grow in every area of our lives. We came from this background of we having to give 10% to the Lord. I won't tell you how much we give, but we've grown. We've gone past. In our freedom, we've gone past. I mean, past. Do you understand? Past. Yeah. Because we want to use our freedom and be so grateful to the Lord for not only having saved us, but delivered us from that law that was such a pressure and such a, a, a burden on our lives that brings fear. And we panicked. And now we are going to restrict ourselves to that same value when God has set me free. And I can't understand how so many Christians, they've been delivered from that 10%, and if they make the account at the end of the month, it's going to be probably 2.5%. I don't mind. It's the desire of your heart. This is where you are. It's okay. But in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 16, I'm going to read that with you. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 16. Now we have read in the book of Peter that we are called to bring what? Spiritual sacrifices. You see, the name sacrifice is the same. The sacrifice in the old covenant and the sacrifice in the new covenant is still sacrifice, but it's not the same spirit. Not the same attitude of heart. The sacrifices of the old covenant is because they were bound by the law. The sacrifices in the new covenant called living sacrifices, we are not bound by the law, but we are a free people. But we still have to bring living sacrifices. We still have to. And the book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 16 declares, but do not forget to do good and to share. I've looked in the Amplified Bible. It says to do good, to be generous, and to distribute. To do good and to share. To do good, to be generous, and to, be distri and to distribute. With such sacrifices, God is well pleased. With such sacrifices, because the verse 15 talks about the sacrifice of praise. And now it talks of the sacrifice of giving. We can't come from the old covenant and enter into the new covenant and be worse. Huh? <laughs> It's like backsliding. Right? It's a bit like that, isn't it? Right? You see, we are not supposed to go back, to be delivered from one law and enter into another law. No. But I believe that as we grow in the Lord, as our hearts are full of gratitude towards the Lord, there are some things in our lives that need to become Priority. Priority. Amen. Amen. 
that needs to become priority. So in other words, the spirit of liberality. Amen. Always ready. Always ready to give. Yes. We can't say, oh Lord, I'm giving you 10% and that's fine for me. We can do that. Everybody can, can limit himself. There's no problem. No one is going to judge you. No one is going to accuse you. No, it's not that the problem. But I believe that God wants to, to allow us to grow in that attitude of being generous and to find ways of blessing the Lord, of blessing God's people. Yeah. I like what we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1 about the churches of Macedonia. Maybe we can read a couple of verses in there. I re remember, we're talking about sacrifice of giving. We're talking about sacrifice of giving. Do you understand the word sacrifice? Right. In the old covenant, you had to put the sacrifice on the altar. Right. On the altar. Abraham was ready to sacrifice his son. A sacrifice is something that takes something out of you. Sacrifice is something that takes something out of you. And I can call that test. God testing our faith. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1, it says something like this. Moreover, brethren, we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, that in a great trial of affliction. Now I'm just talk, I've just mentioned to you test and trial. Uh, test and trial. They were afflicted. They were going through hardships. And yet, it says, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded in the riches of their liberality. In other words, they didn't give out of their abundance. It's clear. They did not give out of their abundance. And the Bible says here, For I bear witness that according to their ability, Yes, and beyond their ability, that's the sacrifice. That's the sacrifice of giving. That's the sacrifice of liberality. Beyond their ability, they were freely willing. Freely willing. Imploring us with much urgency that we would receive the gift and the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. Hallelujah. They did not give out of their abundance. They gave out of their need. And we must be very careful today that because we have the message of grace, the message of grace, we find no need to enter into the realm of the Spirit where we are ready to go beyond the natural situation of life. And we are satisfied because of our needs, our own personal need, because our difficulties, because our tests, because our afflictions, because our problems, because our own needs, we lose the spirit of the new covenant, of freedom. In other words, we use that freedom, we use that so that we can profit. It's the truth. 
And I believe that it's a time today for us to catch up. You understand the word catch up? Catch up with what we have left behind. Catch up with what we have left behind. Firstly, you need to understand that you are not under the law, but you are a free people. You are free. And today, be careful that we have lost something. Lost something. In other words, we go into the other extreme. We were under law, now under freedom, under grace. We do not feel that we need to go beyond to sacrifice. No need to. It's as if that we are happy to give out of our abundance. Or happy to just give just what we can. And you know that what we can, what we can can be nothing. Yes. What we can can be nothing. When you do the account, when you do, you have to pay all your bills, you have to do that, you have to do that, you have to do that, and there is nothing, so it's what you can. So God knows, God understands. It's what I can. That's another spirit. Right? And it's, it will be sad to come to that place. It will be sad to come to that point where we only Give to God. Please understand my, my heart this night, tonight, my brothers and sisters. I don't want to put pressure on you. No. I don't want to try and, and make you uh, feel condemned or just try to push you. No, not at all. Not at all. But my desire for the church is to enter into a realm of the spirit where we understand what freedom is all about in our lives. Hey? What freedom is all about. That gift of freedom. I'm speaking to all of you. I'm speaking to those who are listening to me. I'm speaking to those who are watching. We must be careful. We are not free to just do what we want with our lives. We are not free to become stingy. We are not free for that. We can become like that. We can be stingy. But we are not free for that. Amen. We are free so that nothing binds us. So that there will be no limit in our lives to express our hearts towards God. For what he has done for us. Free. Free for something. God doesn't give us his freedom. The freedom to, to decide things for nothing. Isn't it to please him? Isn't it for us to grow? Isn't it for us to understand the kingdom of God? That's why. And I thank God for delivering me and you. From that burden, that fear, that condemnation of having to do something. Otherwise, what's going to happen? It's going to be a curse? It's going to be what? What is going to fall on me? Right? It's okay to be who you are. But I just want you to understand why God has set us free. Amen. For a purpose. For a purpose. So that he could take our lives more. So that we are not limited. You see, tithing like any other law limits us. In other words, those who have tithed for many years, like me, I was satisfied by my 10%. And the rest, it's okay. Nothing from my heart. Nothing from our hearts. It was just our 10%. And that's it. 
and by force, by obligation. Now I'm free. I thank God for being free. Amen. I thank the Lord that is, I'm not bound by any law. And I thank God that you and I, we are called to use that freedom to serve Jesus the way he wants. Nothing less. Makes me remember that Jesus was in that house and they had that offering. And they were a rich man, very rich man, and a poor old widow. And the Bible says that this man gave much. What does much mean for everyone? It depends. But for that rich man, he gave much. And that much compared to what he had was nothing. And that old widow, she gave two pennies, two. She had two. And she gave the two. And the Bible says that this woman gave out of a need. But that man gave out of his abundance. There was no sacrificial action from that man. But that woman, she gave nothing. What, what you can do with two pennies? Nothing. Nothing. But she gave the two. And God was pleased. She was free to give what she wanted. She was free to give what she wanted. And the man also was free to give what he wanted. That's why we're all free to give what we want today in our lives. We are free to give what we want. Right? But we must be careful that we do not come to the place where we become satisfied and complacent with our lifestyle under grace. Freedom. Freedom. We are free. So you can't point your finger at me. Yes, I can. No one can. No one can point finger at anyone because we are where we are. But you see, we can be where we are, but we are called to be somewhere else, which means further on with God. In a deeper relationship with him. That's what we are called to be. Or we can stay in the place where we are satisfied. We are not under the law. We are under grace. We are free, free people. We can give 100 rand per month to God and we are satisfied. You can be that way. It's not a problem in the sense where God will not condemn you for that. But I'm not talking about being condemned. I'm talking about growing. I'm talking about being in the spirit of the new covenant. I'm talking about building the church. Talking about becoming co-workers with Christ. I'm building the kingdom with Jesus. Amen? That's what we're talking here when we talk about freedom. You're talking about freedom to give. Yes, we know we are free to give. We know. But I believe God that God wants us to come to another level. Of bringing to God through our relationship with Christ. Bringing spiritual sacrifices. That come from the depth of our heart. And I believe that this poor woman gave freely. Freely. She was not stingy. Let's read 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 5. Therefore I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren to go to you ahead of time and prepare your generous gift beforehand, which you had previously promised that it may be ready as a matter of generosity and not as a grudging obligation. Can you see here? Can you see the two difference? The difference between the two? Right. Generosity on one side. 
grudging obligation on the other side. No. We can't stay there. Amen. Got to move on. We've got to become the real people of God. Amen. Amen. You can be a, you know, there are many things that we can do for the Lord. But I believe that God wants us to use that freedom that he has given us in every department, if I can use that word, of life. Everything. Everything. Free. We are a free people. It's not, it's not enough to be satisfied to be free. You can be free and backslide. Yeah. In your giving. I want you to look back. Just a minute. At that time where you were bound. You were bound by tithing. You were bound and living sometimes in fear. In fear. But you were still bringing that 10%. And even under the law, it costs you something. Now under, the, under grace, freedom, no cost. Well, we are people that give our lives. The kingdom of God is about giving our lives. The kingdom of God is about giving. Giving. Of our lives, of everything. My purpose and my motivation is to remind you about what is it to be, what it is to be God's freedom and why God has set us free. What a grace. Never to feel condemned. But is that where we, is that how we want to live? Just never be condemned? Because we are not under the law, we are under grace, therefore we are not condemned? That's why Paul says that there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Is that just where we want to live? Just the feeling of not being condemned every day? Is that all? Is that all that we want? By being under the law, I was condemned. Now I'm under grace. I'm not condemned because I, I, I repent if I do something wrong. And that all? Finish? Is that enough? No. We must move on. We must move on. Verse 7 says in the same chapter, So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly again, or of necessity, law. Can you see? Not grudgingly, not because it is necessary obligation, For oh, God loves a cheerful giver. <laughs> Amen. My freedom must bring me to the point where I am full of joy. Full of joy. Can you, can you make the contrast? I gave under law with fear and obligation. Now under free grace and being free, I need to be a carrier of the joy of the Lord as I give him freely, willingly, and with a joyful heart. Amen. That's what freedom does. That's what freedom does. And so many of us, we lose our joy. You give what you can. not the real joy. Giving just what you can. Do you understand what you can? That little, that nothing, or that much, or whatever. What, just what you can. Limits you. And it stops your joy. It, it quenches that joy. There's no more joy. There's no more joy to give. You've got to, we've got to come to the place where it's a joy for me. Joyful to give. There is greater joy 
to give than to receive greater joy. That's a spiritual Christian, free. And you can be free and allow your flesh to rob you of the joy of giving. Before that, you were fearful of the consequences of not giving your tithe before that. I'm, I'm the truth. You are, you are fearful. Today we can become fearful of not having enough so that our giving becomes so little. There you are fearful, fearful of the condemnation, of the accusation, of, of whatever. Fearing, fearing what can happen to my life. Fearful. Here, we are free. We are free here. But we fear that at the end of the month, we're going to lack. In freedom. So in our freedom, we still fear not to have enough. That's why we just give what we can. And what we can, I repeat, becomes nothing because we fear. We don't fear the consequences. We don't fear what can happen. But we fear of lacking. Not free. There's no freedom in that. There's no freedom in that. Where's our faith? Hey? I believe God wants us to move another step. Move another step, I hear. Move another step. Where we can see and feel in our hearts. When we look at what we give, I don't want to put condemnation on you. Please understand that. It's not my purpose at all. But I desire that you move on. Take another step in the spirit. Freely. Not because of me. Not because of anyone here. No. Not because I preach this message tonight. No. But come to the place where you are free, willing, joyful, generous for the kingdom of God. In other words, your gratefulness towards God for what he has done and busy doing in our lives. We need to understand that God does not need our money. He doesn't need it. I'm not talking to you about the prosperity message. Do you understand that? I'm not talking to you about that. I'm not talking to you about that you have to, you have to, to give to that. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm trying, and I believe that God wants us to rise up and become real co-workers with Christ, and that the kingdom of God becomes the priority of our lives in everything that we do in our freedom. Amen. We are not free for nothing. It's not just a change. Do you understand? Yeah. It's not just a change. I was bound by law, now I'm free. Way. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are like little kids. That's all. Now I'm free. It's for a purpose. It's for a purpose. And this is the relationship that we need and should have with Jesus Christ in total freedom. I tell you, there's an urgency. You know what's happening to the church today. You know. There is like a Laissez aller, let go of our responsibility. And we're just happy to be Christians. Just happy to be Christians. 
we do not condemn, we're fine. We're having a good time, we're having a good life. That's all. Is that all? No, I don't believe so. We need to take freedom, take freedom seriously. And not to hide behind it. We can't hide. And that's the problem today, two extremes, I repeat, two extremes. Keep bound by tithing, and the other extreme is, I'm free. Therefore, I do what I like. It's amazing how when you are under the law, you are not free to do what you want. And you still do it. But we are, but when we are in freedom, we are not forced to do anything. <laughs> and instead of profiting, taking advantage of that freedom, taking advantage of that freedom, because you know what does that freedom bring? It brings a peace of heart. There, there is no peace there. No. Freedom brings joy. Freedom brings peace in your heart. Peace, joy in your heart. To do what God is calling us to do. There you can't be in that, in, in that state of heart. It's impossible. Because there's always a danger. Always a danger. But here, we are free. And let's use it for the glory of God. Let's use it to be a builder, to be a builder in the kingdom of God. To build the kingdom of God with our lives. That's freedom. So I'll close by saying to you, don't be satisfied. Don't hide behind grace. Don't hide behind your freedom. No. You know why? Because God can do above, much above what you can think. We serve a big God, a great God, a God of miracles. Amen? And God is busy trying, trying, to bless us, trying to do things on our behalf by walking by faith, by having faith that God is able. And I use my freedom to respond to what my heart desires and God does the rest. And I'm in faith that God will take care of me and will do the rest in my life and in your life. So in other words, freedom must allow us to progress. To progress, progress in our giving. To progress. If I ask you a question, you and you all shall answer for yourself. You will answer for yourself. For the last year or two years or five years, what has happened with your giving as a free person? As a free person? Was there any progress? Or has it been the same, the same attitude eh? in our lives? We hear the gospel. What's he doing in our lives? How much has saved us from so many situations? Our marriage, our children, our family. And I ask you a question. Huh? Where are you? In that freedom that you have in your giving. Where are we? Where are we? should be proud, proud of giving for the kingdom of God. 
there's no better investment in life. No better investment in life. And I, want, I shall not continue because I can talk to you about what it can bring to our spiritual life when we give with the spirit of sacrifice, what it can bring in our own life, the miracles that it can bring into our lives, into our spiritual state. I won't get into that. But it's a lot. And we are depriving ourselves, depriving ourselves of so many blessings. Because in our freedom we give what we can. What we can. The moment we start giving more than what we can, you shall see. You shall see. Not under law, it's got to come from your heart. Not because I say so, no. But as we grow and as we have that fellowship with the Lord, he will put that conviction in our heart. He will bring our heart to become open, free. Amen? So we're talking about freedom. Huh? We can live for the rest of our lives. For the rest of our lives we can live knowing that we are free. And we are not under any obligation and stay the same person and, and, and give the same amount to God for the rest of our lives. Huh? And what about if Abraham decided to give 50% to El Melchizedek? What about if he decided to give 50%? Huh. What about if he decided that? Then we would be in trouble. <laughs> if we were still under the law. And if God, and if God had wanted the Levites to take 50% out of the Israelites. Bring 50% to me. <laughs> oh Lord, help us. Huh? We would have been broke, you think? You know, we, the Bible says, the just shall live by faith. We have faith that whatever God puts on our hearts to do, don't limit ourselves about what we can, but open our hearts because when God puts some things in our heart and a desire to give to him, let him, let him take care of us. Let him take care of us. Let him take care of us. Otherwise, we'll never grow. In that area of our lives, who will remain a child, being happy. I'm not condemned. Lord, help us. Amen. I close. Freedom is one of the greatest gifts that God has given to us. And I pray tonight that the Lord will show us where we are. Not to have more money for the church, no, for ourselves. Just for every person here tonight. Let God show us where we are. I'm talking about our attitude in our hearts about giving. And I believe that the Lord, by the Spirit, can show us, each one of us. And if we have not failed, but if we, have, we know we are at a place where, you know, we're not moving forward, we know. Let the Holy Spirit touch our hearts and lives tonight. Let him touch our hearts and lives tonight. And show us the purpose of freedom in our own lives. The purpose of freedom. Amen. It's not just a gift to enjoy. It's a gift for us to use for the extension of the kingdom of God. Amen.
Let us stand up. Thank you for tuning in. Join us again next time. For more information about CTMI, visit our website, ctmi.org.